Hello, my name is Maria Melkso. I am a senior lecturer in international security at the University of Kent in Brussels, that is Brussels School of International Studies, where I also convene an MA program in international conflict and security. And I am here today at the Journey Security Forum in Prague to talk about some of my recent research in hybrid warfare and countering hybrid warfare, hybrid threats. In the simplest of terms, you could say that uh, it has something to do with security, but is, it is perhaps less ambitious than the traditional understanding of security as a way of overcoming threats and, uh, and also perhaps referring to an illusion of, of preventing threats in their entirety. So resilience is, is a more pragmatic um, attitude, more pragmatic sensibility in that sense. It would assume that you cannot really prevent all these many threats that are there in uh, this time and age, but you have to learn to cope with them. Of course, the grand ambition of survival, which is the ambition of security, still remains, but it's uh, slightly less utopian in that sense, that you rather think about security in terms of, OK, something bad comes to us, it inevitably will. We will not know exactly when it will happen. But what we have to be able to do is to uh, spring back, so to speak, to, to recover. So that would be the sort of standard understanding of what resilience is. But people, uh, scholars, do diverge on uh, whether you know, it's just recovering uh, exactly the same as you were before, or it's also about transformation. Well, for the same reasons as security is important. So in a way, as I said, they are uh, tied, tied notions um, and, and, and maybe slightly tautological to, uh, to uh, um, bring them together uh, like that. I mean, to be secure uh, is one of these uh, grand illusions. It can never be achieved in full. Uh, and, and the whole security theory is, is full of debates of, you know, what is the optimal level of security that can be achieved in order not to um, push too much, too hard to the other's security interests and, and, and playground. And resilience uh, seems to be particularly um, relevant in the context of contemporary security concerns in Europe precisely because of its broad coverage and broad appeal and precisely because of this, this rather vague uh, nature, indeterminate nature of, of all these threats uh, that are out there um, or that are perceived as endangering the European polity. So these threats, some of them are more uh, traditional kinds, military pressures, but of course uh, uh, people's awareness of various sorts of political interferences, uh, which is the context of resilience and resilience building that we discuss here um, at the Chernian Security Forum. Um, this is where it becomes particularly relevant and pertinent. How can you recover from these more insidious, more sinister, um, you know, gradient threats uh, that might not be that visible, that are more of the kind that Donald Rumsfeld referred to as unknown unknowns. Okay, so they might be unknown unknowns, or they might be uh, known to us now, but they are, uh, they are complex um, and, um, and uh, not that easy always to identify. So there is also the problem of when do we actually know something is threatening enough or, or sufficiently problematic to start dealing with it. So this is, in a way, the more fundamental question with resilience building and hybrid warfare. Mm -hmm. It seems to be the answer if you look at the uh, institutional responses uh, of the European Union and NATO. So you could say that resilience, being resilient, is at least these institutions' response to you know, what we can do, how we can efficiently counter 
hybrid warfare slash hybrid threats. Um, what it means then is also precisely this, um, in a way, a minimal pragmatic ambition. You know, there is this dose of realism that we understand that we have to, in a way, learn to live with the spectrum of, of challenges and, and do it, you know, as efficiently as we can, trying to remain what we are, which is a, an important part of uh, countering this, uh, this hybrid spectrum of, of challenges and also warfare. Uh, but, of course, uh, it's, it's not, you know, that easy. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it also gets us to this discussion of what do we exactly mean when we talk about the other uh, party in this, uh, in this um, problem that is hybrid warfare. What exactly is hybrid warfare? And, and again, just as with resilience, you know, by and large, you would have a very broad definition, which seems to be the definition that many operate with in, in, uh, in the media and public discourse, which would be hybrid warfare as basically any kind of political interference by any political uh, entity um, to the affairs of others. So you would have, say, Rex Tillerson saying that, uh, that uh, the uh, Russian interference in the 2016 US presidential elections was an act of hybrid warfare. Uh, and now the question is, is it actually that useful to uh, bring any sort of political meddling attempt or pot political influencing attempt under this umbrella term, or should we be more restrictive about how we define it? And that, of course, also uh, would give you a slightly different answer to what sort of resilience are we seeking? What sort of resilience are these institutions trying to build as a response? Because it depends very much on what is their definition of the hybrid spectrum of threats or hybrid warfare, what exactly is meant by it. And again, you know, the, even the terminology that the European Union and uh, NATO operate with is slightly different. So the European Union would not, for instance, uh, really mention warfare because it's, it's not in the playbook, uh, in the vocabulary of the European Union. European Union likes to think of itself as a sort of post-war um, entity as a postmodern security actor, which is also why in this uh, joint framework of the European Union about countering um, uh, pertinent challenges, it talks about the hybrid, uh, hybrid threats and challenges rather than hybrid warfare, which is not the problem for NATO. Uh, that, that calls the kettle black, so to speak. <laughs>
the way many would, uh, as, a, as a very broad, uh, broad uh, usage of you know, various sorts of conventional, unconventional, coercive and non-coercive political, military, but also economic, uh, informational, uh, mnemonical means and capabilities at once together um, for a particular strategic purpose, then uh, it, it does become an issue. Uh, when do we know that it's not just some sort of uh, regular, you know, maybe not that sinister attempt to, to have things your way or to influence things in your uh, wanted direction in another country, but actually part of this uh, grand uh, strategic plan which will end up with some sort of a physical kinetic engagement. So this becomes the issue there. And this is why I think it's important and indeed interesting to also study hybrid warfare, not just as a, as a policy problem or a policy world's invention, but also as a very mm, fundamental problem for uh, international security theory. So it's also in a way a nice neat case study that tells us quite a bit about how, how the European Union and NATO in light of these hybrid challenges are also fighting not just for their survival but also for their survival as particular kinds of organizations or as, as the guardians of a particular type of world order.